Welcome to this special focus on Forbes Africa's top 25 listed companies. I'm Keisha Gitai. This annual event seeks to highlight the significant development of West African markets over the years. With it, Forbes, a leading business and lifestyle publication, recognizes the achievements of these top companies and power players on West Africa's stock exchanges. It also pays tribute to the overall market leader. But first, let's take a look at the environment in which these companies operate. Africa is home to 29 exchanges representing 38 national capital markets. Aside from these individual national exchanges, there are also two regional stock exchanges, the West African Regional Market or BRVM located in Côte d'Ivoire and the Central African Regional Market or BVMAC in Gabon, both of which service several countries in their respective regions. One of the oldest exchanges on the continent is the Casablanca Stock Exchange of Morocco, founded in 1929. It's also one of Africa's 10 largest exchanges, along with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which is the first in West Africa. The growth of West African stock markets is significant, considering that the NSE was established in 1960 and currently has 223 listed companies. I think Nigeria, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, is the oldest stock exchange in the West African region. Uh, we started in 1960 as the Lagos Stock Exchange, and we actually started operations in 1961. Uh, we helped uh, the Ghana Stock Exchange set up uh, much later on, and in the Francophone countries, um, they initially uh, set out with uh, smaller exchanges, but then they came together uh, to form one uh, exchange across the seven uh, nations. The uh, BVRM, uh, I believe, uh, is the name. And uh, so we've come a long way um, and we continue to evolve. In the lives of exchanges globally, we're probably still young in our evolution. In the 1960s, more established companies started listing as they could comply with government regulations. Currently, the exchange can attract companies to list because of the value proposition it offers. There are still a number of companies in different sectors that probably need a little push, uh, either from incentive perspective or from a, a perspective of um, you know, uh, reverse incentives. Uh, so companies in the oil and gas sector, companies in the telecom sector, um, and such other uh, sectors that probably need something more compelling than just the value proposition from the exchanges. I think we've done very well with attracting foreign investors into the Nigerian markets. Um, I was recently in the United States uh, on a roadshow uh, in Washington and uh, in New York where we met a lot of foreign portfolio uh, investors, institutional investors, global emerging market funds, frontier funds, Africa funds. And we, we know that they're all very interested in Nigeria. We've sold the story and they're participating. In fact, the participation rate in Nigeria is dominated by foreign uh, portfolio investors. Um, having said that, we think that our market is going to be driven by local investors. And so we are going to be devoting a lot of effort and energy towards investor education and towards coming up with programs and also advocating appropriate policies to create a conducive environment for local investors to come back into the market. Many of the first companies to list were so-called colonial companies, mainly from Britain. And then after a while, we had the indigenization programs where um, government forced uh, companies in the economy to, the, to, to indigenize. And so they had to sell off a lot of their foreign holdings. So what happened in those cases was that they, were, they did it through the stock exchange. So indigenization was one big push that brought companies to the exchange in the 70s. And then later on in the 80s, you had the privatization exercise of government. So they divested from a lot of their industrial and manufacturing holdings through the stock exchange. In uh, more recently, you've seen the bank capitalizations in the 90s and 2000s that have brought companies to the exchange. Um, but for the future, um, there'll be changes again. Um, it's nice to see in the, this year, the two listings that we've had have been indigenous companies one in manufacturing, doing very interesting things, and they, what excited us is that they're not Lagos-based. They are based um, uh, in Benin, and they do a lot um, in that part of the country and the South-South. 
and the second one was an indigenous microfinance bank, which is doing a lot, uh, making great strides based in Abuja, but with plans around the country. And we also have a lot of uh, prospects going forward for the big guns of the Nigerian economy, exploration and production, uh, we're hopeful in the areas of, of telecoms and also agriculture, and the utilities through the privatization of the power sector. Currently, the total market capitalization of the 25 top listed companies in West Africa is around $41 billion, with Dangote Cement, Nigerian Breweries, Zenith Bank, First Bank, and Guarantee Trust Bank among this year's top five. By celebrating these companies, Forbes Africa not only aims to acknowledge their achievements, but also their ability to thrive in one of the world's most challenging financial environments. It also emphasizes the potential of African companies to the international community, particularly investors. I think it's really the right time to, to, to acknowledge the, and to celebrate the West African companies on the Ghanaian, on the Ivory, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, because at the end of the day, it's not, the conditions are not great internally and externally. So I believe it's always the, the best time to, to acknowledge and to celebrate the West African company listed in West Africa. But, but again, I mean, it's all about celebrating entrepreneurship. That is, that, that's the vision. There's definitely a place for the Forbes 25 Top Listed Companies Awards in West Africa, providing a lot of advantages and opportunities for companies in this region. Well, we think it will encourage companies. We think all too often these lists are global, all too often these lists have bypassed Africa, but this isn't. This is West Africa. This is um, to promote companies in this region and ultimately to show that there can be excellence and there can be success and to encourage other companies to do the same. Spearheading this initiative is Rakesh Wahi, founder of the ABN Group, which incorporates CNBC Africa, Forbes Africa and ABN 360. Uh, we've finished five years in our operating history in Africa now. And one of the reasons that I've started uh, with a lot of these events, particularly Abla's last year and now celebrating the success of the top 25 companies, is so that we can, uh, we can start celebrating the successes of companies in Africa. Uh, we want people to know about corporate leadership. We want them to know about the companies that are doing well in the economies here and start celebrating these heroes, uh, which are unsung to most part. Africa is known as a continent of doom and gloom. And we want people to know that, you know, there's a lot of other prosperity that's taking place over here. There are well-run companies that have survived economic uh, calamities and crises. Uh, they have come through the last three years in a manner that is uh, commendable. And so these are the successes we want to talk about and we want to celebrate these successes in Africa. The ABN Group's strategy is to host more events across sub-Saharan Africa. When you look at a, uh, an award ceremony like the ABLAs, the All Africa Business Leaders Awards, last year we did it in South Africa, which was mainly an African event, but uh, focused and was skewed largely towards Southern African companies. Uh, we took a decision at that time that we will start now having uh, these events in different parts. For instance, ABLAs this year is going to have a West African uh, focus, an East African focus, a Southern African focus, with a grand finale of all the regional contests to take place in Johannesburg in October. Similarly, for the top 25 companies, we're going to be doing it across uh, Sub-Sahara Africa. We're going to be celebrating successes in different regions. West Africa is just the first part. We believe that there's a lot of activity, economic activity and others that is taking place in countries like Ghana, in Nigeria. And we took this region as the first one to start from, but we're going to go into East Africa next and then into Southern Africa. We're going on a short commercial break. More on Forbes Africa's top 25 listed companies when we return.